In this video, I'm going to reveal five extremely simple PPC strategies that you can use right now to increase your Amazon sales in under 10 minutes. The way I've come up with these strategies is I've spent the last few years working with thousands of successful Amazon sellers that use our PPC software to manage their campaigns. Each and every one of these strategies is tried and tested on dozens of accounts and I have the numbers to prove that they work. I'm going to share screen right now, take you through them on Campaign Manager, show you what results you can get and how to set them up. Let's go. Okay, so our very first strategy is launching what's called a waterfall campaign. A waterfall campaign is essentially one campaign that contains like dozens or hundreds of ad groups and each ad group contains a single ASIN and an auto campaign. So over here, I have one live directly on campaign manager. Uh, you can see the actual numbers here. So over the last 30 days, we spent 805, made 8.5K, uh, ran it at a 9.69% ACoS. 40 cents CPC and made 163 orders. And this is zero maintenance. We don't do any bid changes for this. Uh, we don't add new targets. We might add like a new ASIN in if we've just launched it. But other than that, we're doing nothing for this campaign. And it's doing almost 10K per month for us. And it's profitable, right? 10% ACoS, if our gross margin is 30%, we're taking home around 20% of that 8.5K, which is like, I don't know the math on that, like 2.5K, 3K, not sure what that would be, but it's pretty huge, obviously. So over here, I'm going to take you through how to set this up. Just create one big campaign, create your first ad group, put a single ASIN in there. I just like to name my ad groups with the uh, actual ASIN's name. So you just create one ad group, put the ASIN or SKU name in there, uh, set up an auto campaign, run it at 20, 30, 40 cent bids, and that's it. You just set it B, you create ad groups for each and every other product. I like to split out my uh, waterfall campaigns by product line. Some people just put every single ASIN in their account in there, which is fine but I like to split them out. So if I run multiple product lines, like if I have like a candle product line, that would be one waterfall campaign with all of my candle ASINs. Then if I have like a carpet product line, I'd have another carpet waterfall campaign and split out all the ASINs into separate ad groups there. Then you just set up the auto campaign. Again, put 10, 20, 30 cent bids, 40 cent bids, depending on your average order value, your conversion rate and your margins. And it should run at five to 15% ACoS zero effort you just set it up and you forget it unless you want to add more asins in later and that's it right if you have a large catalog and by large i mean like 1000 plus products you could probably do multiple six figures per month so this campaign again has 78 asins in and we're doing almost 10k per month right if you set up uh like similar campaigns for like a thousand asin catalog and you just multiply these numbers up and you probably are looking at like 150,000 or at least $100,000 per month at 10 to 15% ACoS, which is obviously not profitable and zero effort. So the larger your catalog, the more important this strategy will be. And again, super simple to set up. Uh, if you want, you can go into placements and you can look at your performance too on a placement level. And when it makes sense, you can add a placement boost in. So over here, we have 30% on top of search, right? This one's running at 9.65% ACoS. Uh, rest of search, actually, we have a bid adjustment for right now or a placement adjustment for. So you can actually go in and adjust this, which I'm going to do right now since this is running at 7.5% ACoS. I'm doing 5K a month in sales. So I'm just going to go in and add a placement boost of 40% to this. Right, and this is going to start making us more money. So uh, yeah, super powerful strategy. Just to recap, one campaign, several ad groups, one ASIN per ad group an auto um, targeting like setup in each ad group, 20, 30, 40 cent bids, run it for a couple of weeks, see if you want to put placement boosts in and you're good to go. You just run this, you set it up once and it makes you money forever. The second strategy we have is expanding match types and ad types using the targeting tab. So the very first thing you want to do before you actually get into the targeting tab is you want to create a list of all sponsored product campaigns uh, for the ASIN that you want to look at and a separate list for all sponsored brand campaigns for that same exact ASIN. And once you have those ready, you go into the targeting tab. Let me just remove this filter here. You go into the targeting tab and you add a filter for campaigns and ad groups. And then you select one of those lists. You can either start with your sponsored product or sponsored brand campaigns. Don't put them both in at once, but the order doesn't matter since we're going to check both anyways. So select the campaigns that you want to put in and create that filter so that you're only looking at the targets within those campaigns. And you're going to go back into filter by, and you'll select targeting type, and you'll start filtering by the match type. So first you're going to select exact and you're going to add that one in. And you go in and you're going to export that, right? Then you're going to do the same, select phrase, remove exact, 
right? You're going to add that and export and so on. And you do this for all three match types for a sponsored product. Then you repeat this process for a sponsored band. And then you go in and you create an Excel sheet like this one. Let me move my face to the other side of the screen. And let me just show you what we're working on here. So over here, you're going to add all of your broad keywords in one row or in one column, then all of your face keywords in another column. Do the same for exact, and then map this out over sponsored uh, product and sponsored band, right? Then what you want to do is look for keywords that exist in one or two match types, but not the others. So if you have one thing that only exists in exact, you want to uh, map that out to both phrase and broad. So over here, I have a column called add broad. Those are the keywords that exist in either phrase or exact, but don't exist in broad. And this is what we're going to add in later. Then we have add phase and we have add exact for the same exact purpose. Then I do this for my sponsored product campaigns. Then finally, once that's done, I create one complete list uh, of all the keywords in sponsored band, right? And I'll put that in a separate tab. So I'd say something like SP keywords, right? And this is everything, everything across all match types, plus the keywords that you plan to add in, right? So if you have something in add broad, add phase, add exact, that doesn't matter. You just copy all columns and you just add it over here, right? And you're going to do the same for sponsored products. You take all columns and you'd add it here. SP keywords, right? Then you'd use the data cleanup to remove duplicates, right? So you're going to remove duplicates from sponsored bands keywords and you remove duplicates from sponsored product keywords. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to have another column called add SP. Another column called add, oops, add SB, right? And essentially add SP is anything that exists in sponsored brands that doesn't exist in sponsored products. And anything that exists in sponsored products that doesn't exist in sponsored brands would be added to add SB. And essentially what we're doing here is we're maximizing our keyword like surface area. So if something works very well in exact and it doesn't exist in phase or broad, we can move that over to phase and broad to start to get similar search terms and expand the number of uh, searches that we're showing up for, which will help us get more clicks and potentially even lower our CPC because broad and phase tend to have a lower CPC than exact. Conversely, if something works very well in broad, uh, we are going to be getting good results, but we're not going to be showing up that much for that like single specific search term since you're also paying to show up for all these other search terms. So we take that keyword from broad and we put it once in phrase and once in exact, right? So you end up either increasing your search terms by a lot by going from exact out to phrase and broad, or you increase your targeting on that specific keyword that was working very well for you. And you target it specifically as a search term using exact and kind of narrowed down using phrase, right? Uh, so that's one way to increase your surface area and doing this alone could probably boost sales for that ASIN 20, 30%. Um, after that, you also have uh, the add SP and add SB tabs. And what you essentially want to do is figure out like what keywords are already working for me in sponsored product and move those to sponsored band because you'll get more ad placements that way. And then again, what's working for me in sponsored band that's not in sponsored product and move that over to sponsored product to get more clicks, get more visibility there and get more sales. This is again, not like super difficult. This whole thing with the Excel sheets and everything should take like 20 minutes. And I've seen this increase sales 20, 30% for some setters. Our third strategy is budget allocation using business reports. So the first thing you want to do is go into business reports and go to the buy ASIN section and uh, select detailed page sales and traffic, right? Over here, you're going to get a list of all of your ASINs. This is a single ASIN account that we use for testing at AI Hello, but you're going to get all of your ASINs with all the numbers, including like sales, session, conversion rate, and so on by ASIN. Then you're just going to download this and you're going to put it in another uh, Excel sheet. Let me just move back on all of this stuff for you. So you're going to put it in another Excel sheet uh, and it's going to display all of these metrics in. I delete most of this. So I'm just going to go in. I'll delete parent ASIN. I'll delete title and SKU. I'll delete everything in between sessions. And total product sales. And I'll just move everything together. I'll just delete this as well. And move everything in together. Right. And I'll create a new column and I'll call this revenue over session. This is revenue per session. 
you're just going to divide this number by this number. It'll be C2 divided by V2. Right? And this will give you revenue per session. This isn't working because these include dollar signs. So you're just going to have to go into edit, find and replace. And then just find dollar sign and replace it with nothing. Just replace all of this. You're going to get revenue per session. Over here, I've just copy pasted the same ASIN more than once, which is why all of the numbers are going to turn out the same. But for you, since you have different ASINs, they're going to be different. And uh, essentially what you're looking at here is which ASIN has the highest revenue per session. Right, while still having significant sessions and uh, product sales. Because sometimes very small ASINs will have a single sale uh, on like one or two sessions and they'll have a revenue for a session of like $20, $30. So that isn't statistically significant. So you want to filter it down uh, to ASINs with at least like 500 or 1,000 sessions using filters. So here you just filter it down. This is again just the same ASIN repeated over and over again, but you'd filter by condition. Right, you'd be like greater than 500, for example, and you'd scroll down. Just move my face. You'd scroll down. Greater than 500, and you'd scroll down and you'd press OK. Right, and this would show you all of the ASINs with a decent number of sessions. You'd be able to see revenue per uh, session on an ASIN level. And essentially, the ASINs with the highest revenue per session will continue to increase your sales at a faster rate than the ASINs with lower revenue per session. So I have an ASIN with like $5 revenue per session. If I run more ads to it and I get 200 extra sessions per month between ads and organic, that will generally put an extra 200 times 5, which is $1,000 per month in my pocket. Whereas if I use that same PPC spend and I put it on an ASIN that has a $3 revenue per session, and I increase sessions there by 200, I'd only increase my revenue by 600 per month. So the ASINs with the highest revenue per session, and again, ASINs with statistically significant data, so we're talking 500 or 1,000 plus sessions, depending on the size of your account, um, that have a good revenue per session are going to increase your sales much faster. If you want to be a bit more advanced, uh, you can get the ad spend by ASIN. For sponsored band, just divide the campaign spend by the ASINs that are in it, and you just get total ad spend by ASIN. So total ad spend by ASIN, and you put it in, right? So, for example, 600 bucks for each one of those ASINs. Uh, then you'd have cost per session, right? And essentially, you're just going to divide 600 by the number of sessions we have, and it's going to give you your cost per session. So I'm just going to have to remove all of the dollar signs here again. Uh, so edit, find and replace. Dollar sign, uh, replace all, done, all right? So we have 600 over here. Then we're going to do equal um, 600 divided by number of sessions we have. And that's my cost per session. So you're going to do this for all ASINs. And now you have how much you make per session and how much you're spending per session, right? Then you're going to have net revenue per session which is how much you're making per session minus how much you're spending. So if you have an ASIN that has a very high revenue per session, but you're spending a lot to acquire each session, that can actually be less profitable than an ASIN that has a lower uh, revenue per session, but uh, the cost per session is also a lot lower. So it ends up being more net revenue or more net profit for you. So what we do over here is equal revenue per session minus cost per session, right? And this gives you net revenue per session. So this is how much you'll make net after ad costs for each additional session that you drive, right? After that, if you want, you can also do uh, minus COGS and minus selling fees. So you can get the actual net profit per session. So what you can do is you can get net profit by ASIN. And you can just export this from whatever uh, accounting software you're using, like Sellerboard. So you put net profit per ASIN. Um, if we have $3,000, let's say we have four fifty dollars net profit, right? This is after ads, after FBA, after the marketplace fee, after uh, your landed cost, after everything. So this is net profit after everything. And then again, you can have profit slash session, right? And you can just take this. So equals um, this divided by this. This gives you your net profit. Again, I have to remove the dollar sign, right? So... Um, and then replace dollar sign 
and face all. Right, so you're just gonna do this. Um, this has been given to me in percentage form, but generally what you do is you take 450 or whatever your profit is, you divide it by this, and this will give you your net profit. This one isn't actually 69%. Uh, this is probably $0.69 dollars per session in net profit. Uh, so I'll just replace that. You can change your formatting. I'll just save us some time and put that in. So 0 0.69 uh, cents or 0 0.69 dollars per session is net profit. So again, if you want to be more like, I guess, accurate or more complex, you can uh, do this at different levels. Level one is just revenue per session. Level two is revenue per session minus cost per session. So this is net revenue after ads per session. And then if you want to be super, super accurate, you can do net profit per session. So over here we have net profit, which is 450 for the whole ASIN divided by sessions. And this will tell you how much additional profit you'll drive per like incremental session that you add. So you find the ASIN with the highest net profit per session and you drive more traffic to it, either with like improved SEO or improved ads. And that's going to have the fastest uh, increase or the biggest increase on total profit for the entire account. Fourth strategy we have is using PPC campaigns to increase your organic rank. The first thing you want to do is find the keywords that you're going to try to rank for. So I have two strategies for doing this. Strategy number one is Cerebro and finding keywords that you already kind of rank for. And strategy number two is brand analytics. I'm gonna start with Helium 10 over here. Uh, essentially you want to throw your ASIN in and select your marketplace. Then you're gonna scroll down to filters, put organic rank 10 to 30. So it filters for keywords where you're already kind of getting some level of traction and then filter for search volume above 100 to make sure that those keywords gain significant traffic. So that's when you do rank for them. Uh, it's gonna actually have an effect on your sales because there's no use in ranking for a keyword that only gets a couple of searches each month. So this is going to give you a list of keywords that you're kind of doing well on. Over here, this ASIN only has four keywords because it's small, uh, but your ASIN could have like 100 plus depending on its size. So you're just going to export these and throw them on a spreadsheet. Then you're going to move into brand analytics and uh, you're going to look at the search terms that Amazon provides for you there. This is just in search analytics. Then you just go to search query performance report and you're going to get this uh, data. And over here, you're looking at a couple of things. Uh, you want to look at the search terms, first and foremost, that you're showing up for, how much volume they got, uh, to see if they're actually like going to give you significant traffic if you were to rank for them. Then you want to look at your share of clicks. So over here, brand share for clicks. Then you want to look at brand share for purchases, right? So oops, let me just go back in. So brand share for uh, clicks is going to show you what percentage of clicks you get out of the total clicks for that search term and brand share of purchases will show you what percentage of purchases you get out of all the purchases made through that search term and what you want to look for are keywords where your percentage of purchases are higher than your percentage of clicks because that means you convert at a higher rate so if you only get 10 percent of clicks but you have 20 percent of total conversions or total purchases that means you're converting clicks at a 2x higher rate than everyone else and CVR is one of the main, if not the main ranking factor um, for uh, organic ranking on Amazon, right? So this is the first thing you want to look for, higher uh, percentage of purchases than clicks. And the second thing is, is you want to look at the search query volume. So generally with, uh, with the keywords that you want to rank for, again, you want to see 100 or 200 plus search volume to make sure it's actually significant. A lot of these over here, as you can see, are only getting like four or five searches per month which again, isn't gonna drive any significant traffic to your uh, landing page, even if you were to rank number one for it. So I'd ignore anything with under 100 or 100, 200 monthly searches, depending on the current like amount of traffic you're getting for your product. And again, I just look for percentage of conversions and percentage of clicks to make sure that I have a good conversion rate, right? And once you have a search term where you're converting very well, and you are doing that on a significant amount of data. So at least five plus purchases on that search term, anything below that can kind of mess with your numbers and mean that it's not super accurate. So if you're converting better than everyone at these five plus purchases and your search term has a hundred plus or 200 plus searches per month, then that's something you're gonna want to try to rank organically for. So you're just gonna generate download over here, filter through everything using Excel and come up with that final keyword list uh, that you want to rank for. And then you're gonna bring that over with the list that we have from Cerebro. You're going to put it all in here. So these are all of the keywords that you want to rank for. You're just going to throw them in here after filtering for, like through them in a separate sheet. And then you're also going to find uh, your current rank. So you can find this directly through AI Hello, or you can just find it through Helium 10 or any other like PPC software tool. 
Uh, it's going to tell you how high you're ranking. So you're going to throw all of your keywords in here. You're going to put your initial rank on those keywords. And then you're going to want to update this every 10 days, right? To see how well you're ranking after you set up the PPC campaigns. For the PPC campaigns, you're just going to hit create campaign. Uh, and you want to create single keyword campaigns or at least single keyword ad groups. And again, you can just do this through bulk sheets, but you want to create uh, exact match campaigns uh, and sponsored product with one, uh, with just like the ASIN you're trying to rank and one keyword. And you want to bid higher than average for it. So bid at least the suggested bid, if not higher, maybe go 20, 30% above the suggested bid if the suggested isn't already too high for you and uh, set those up. And once you set those up, you want to go in and add a top of search placement boost of at least 100%. And that's then just run that campaign. So a campaign, a single ASIN, a single ad group with a single keyword, use the suggested bid or higher, add a 100% placement boost, run this for at least 10 days and see how it affects your rank, right? And you want to color these in, just to make everything super easy to track. So if your rank improves, color it green. If after 20 days it becomes worse, you want to color this red. And you can just track all of your keywords super quick and just do this for at least two months. So every 10 days, for two months so you're going to have total uh, six updates you're just going to track your rank and what you want to see is a clear um like periodic improvement in rank every 10 days until you break into top five or top 10 depending on the volume of the search uh sorry the volume of the search term so if it's very high volume you might not break into top five with a smaller product but if it's medium volume you probably could so you want to try to break into top five because that's where most of the actual click volume happens and you want to do it over a 60 day period with updates every 10 days. Our fifth and final strategy is budget optimization. So what you want to do here is just go into the uh, budget step and you're going to see this data. So over here, you can see the average time spent in budget. So here, this account only spent 90% of the time in budget, which means 10% of its time was out of budget. And over here, you can see estimate data from Amazon uh, for how much this cost them in terms of sales, clicks, and spend. So here we have estimated, estimated missed sales, 115,000 to 351,000. Estimated missed clicks, up to 167,000. Estimated missed impressions, almost 35 million, right? Uh, so these numbers are estimate figures from Amazon. So I wouldn't like take them super seriously, but if they're estimating that you missed at least 115,000, then you probably missed at least like 40,000 in sales. Right, which is still big. So you just want to divide anything by half and just take that as your benchmark number. And what you can do here is you can also filter campaigns. So you can look at campaigns with an A cost below a certain amount or sales above a certain amount. So you can say A cost lower than 20%, less than 20%. And you can see the time and budget for those. This one, these ones are only in budget for 84% of the time. So this should get prioritized. So you have a few campaigns, around 240 campaigns here that are out of budget 16% of the time, right? And some of these are like out of budget 65% of the time, right? And they're all sub 20% ACoS, actually averaging a 13% ACoS between all of them. So if you just set these run uh, for like the full day or just like increase the budget on all of these, you'd easily add at least like multiple five figures worth of sales at an average a cost of 13 percent so this is super easy again you just do this in five minutes you can just like have a bulk action for all of these campaigns so you just select all of them change their budget if it's like 30 dollars per campaign you can just change it all to 100 200 bucks and you probably won't max out on it if it's a super high spend campaign you can change its budget to a couple thousand dollars a day and you'll never max out on the budget there and doing this again takes a couple minutes but can add multiple five figures to your, to your to your total like account sales per month, right? At the same ACoS that you're currently getting, which is extremely difficult to do. Uh, so this over here was our final strategy and our final piece of advice. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you again next week. Have a great day.